cougars. It's Mrs. Belatesh. Will you please get out your science notebook? And I want you to put this page in your science notebook. It's called Adaptations. And we're gonna make a few changes to this page. So let's look at what this says. It says adaptations. Look at the, and then it says animals in one set of habitat organisms cards. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna cross that out. We're gonna say, look at the crayfish, period. What adaptations do the crayfish have for movement, getting food, protection, and raising young? That's what we're gonna focus on. We're gonna focus on just the crayfish, okay? And then here it says the animal, you're gonna write crayfish. And I put an arrow all the way down because it's all about the crayfish. And I wrote crayfish here. Now in this next column, it says adaptation. The first one, I, we're gonna focus on structure and I crossed out behavior. And then the second one, I crossed out structure because we're gonna focus only on behavior. So you've made the change here. We're only looking at crayfish. The top, we're looking at the structure, the part of the crayfish. And the bottom, we're gonna be looking at the behavior of the crayfish. All right, so let's take a quick look at the crayfish. So. How do the crayfish move? There's a couple of different ways, right? They can walk and they use their walking legs. What is another way that the crayfish move? Oh, I'm showing you one right there. So I wrote that the crayfish have walking legs that help them move. Right, that's not the only kind of legs they have. They have legs, they have their pincers for other things, but they have walking legs and that helps them move. What structure does a crayfish have that helps it get food? So let's take a quick look. The crayfish have these pincers, right? They have these pincers that help them rip and tear food. I wrote that they have pincers for getting food. What structure does the crayfish have for defense? Well, first of all, it has an exoskeleton, right? So it has a shell for defense, but also, what else does it usually do? It uses its claws, its pincers for defense. They have an exoskeleton or a shell, and that shell helps them be protected. They also have those pincers. How does the crayfish care for its young? The female crayfish has long legs on her tail. They're called swimmerettes. And those swimmerettes hold the eggs and the baby crayfish once they hatch. Now that we've finished the first one talking about the structure. Now we're gonna talk about the behaviors. What behaviors do the crayfish have that help it move? Well, one behavior is that when it gets scared, it goes backwards very quickly, right? So that, a, that tail flap, that curving the tail flap underneath and swimming backwards is a behavior. One behavior it has is that it shoots backwards when it is trying to escape, right? That is a behavior for movement. What behavior does the crayfish have for getting food? Well, we didn't really see this um, in our videos, but crayfish are nocturnal animals. So one of their behaviors is that they hunt at night. What behavior does the crayfish have for protection or defense? They hide, right? Well, when we put the houses into their uh, container, they all went into the containers. So the crayfish hide for protection. 
And a behavior that the crayfish have for caring for their young is that they carry the babies. So their tail is the structure, but the behavior is that they carry the eggs. Okay, so now I want you to glue this page into your science notebook. And let's go through the questions together. Question number one, what is an adaptation? Well, an adaptation is a structure or a behavior that helps an animal survive, right? That's what we were talking about with the crayfish. The crayfish has structures for eating its pincers, but it has a behavior of hunting at night to help it eat. So there's a structure and there's a behavior. Sorry, my handwriting is a little messy, but it's structures or behaviors that help animals survive. What adaptations do birds have for moving? Now, while birds do have legs and they're good for walking, really birds have wings and feathers and those wings and feathers help them fly. What adaptations do birds have for getting food? The beak of the bird is for pecking and for getting food. And we are going to be looking at the beaks of birds in great detail in our next engineering project. What adaptations do animals have for surviving in the cold? Animals have either feathers, fur, or blubber, some type of a fat that helps insulate them from the cold. What adaptations do animals have for defending themselves? For defense, an animal has an exoskeleton or it has sharp teeth or sharp claws or some other way using colors, some other way to show that they are dangerous. What adaptations do animals have for raising their young? Well, animals live in groups and they make nests. They also carry their young, kind of like, think about the um, kangaroos who have a pocket. All right, so we've really looked at structures and behaviors that help animals survive, and those are adaptations. I made a little videotape of a nest with four baby birds in it. And I want you to take a look at this video and I want you to then write in your science notebook what are the structures of the baby birds and what are the behaviors of the baby birds to encourage the parents to feed them. So in the kindergarten play yard, there is a nest inside one of the little kitchenettes and there's a nest and baby baby chicks and boys and girls look at them they're hungry and so what do they do they open up their big mouth and the mother of course says oh my goodness there's a big mouth very very hungry and she's going to bring a little worm or something and feed them there are four baby birds in this nest and they just hatched not too long ago and you can see how tired they are Cougars, great job today. Next week, we're gonna start on our engineering project. We're gonna start learning about bird beaks and how birds are adapted to survive. See you next time.